Imagine getting a job offer because someone reads your blog, not your resume, your blog, or turns to your hobby or turn your hobby into your career because you have the following to support you. Joining us right now is a man who says it's all possible if you simply show your work. Austin Cleon joining us right now, fresh off of the South by Southwest Festival down in Austin, Texas. Austin, good to have you with us. Hey, y'all. Thanks for having me. All right, so you say there are 10 simple principles uh, that folks should use who are looking for work if they want to, quote, unquote, show their work. Tell us what you mean by that. Well, the big principle of the book is that uh, you should think about process, not product. So many of us, we feel like we don't have a lot to show for our efforts. But, you know, like we do a lot of behind the scenes work. But if you think about all the skills and all the influences and all the things you have that go into your work, you can find little ways of sharing that online. And in the act of sharing your work, you can build a network that you can then use for, you know, fellowship, feedback, or patronage. Now, Austin, uh, one of the leading free market economists, Barry Asma, says of the Internet age, in essence, we are all producers. If you respond to a blog, if you have friends to whom you email, there is intellectual property that, that is produced uh, expressly for the Internet. Uh, what we've seen work on a mass scale thus far in terms of e-commerce, uh, I think about eBay and sites like that, but, but you're really talking about uniquely personal entrepreneurial endeavors, correct? Well, I think anyone who does any kind of work has a kind of unique knowledge and experience that other people would be interested in if they knew how to share it in the right way. You know, we kind of all like to say that the work speaks for itself, but oftentimes our work doesn't speak for itself. The stories we tell around our work has a huge effect on how people interpret that work and how they feel about it and also how they value it. Now, Austin, I know this is so, somewhat of a new trend. We're using non-traditional ways to find employment, uh, things like a blog or some sort of video that you produced at home to get employers to, to find you and make you stand out from the crowd. But are, you know, where are we in the point now where this is becoming acceptable to most employers? Is it still a minority uh, of job providers that are, that are really taking advantage of this, or is it becoming more mainstream? You know, I, I know a few people in HR, and the thing that they all tell me is, you know, it's just, uh, it's so hard. It, you know, we have this huge workforce out there, right? But it's still so hard to find good people or to get a real grasp on what people are like and what their real skills are. You know, resumes just don't speak to the kind of new skill set that people need to have the way they used to. And so the idea of showing your work is to have some sort of, you know, to kind of own your own media empire, you know, to show the actual nuts and bolts of what you do so that people can really grasp it and they can really understand it. So in terms of concrete steps uh, in the ether and on the Internet, a guy's name is John Doe. Should he immediately establish a website, johndoe.com? Or we take a look at these, these social sites uh, and we hear from some HR people a cautionary tale about what you share at Facebook, et cetera. Walk us through the maze, what you think works well in your mind. Well, I think short-term social media platforms are wonderful ways to get to know people in your industry or customers or people you want to reach out to. I think long-term, the thing to do is to own your own turf online, to get your own domain set up, to own your own little piece of the internet and to build a little site, no matter how simple, and to showcase your work. Um, but you know, I think I think the thing to always remember is, as my friend Lauren Saran likes to say, you have to you have to post as though everyone has the potential to fire you. <laughs> you know, you have to be very careful and calculated about what you do share online. Well, that's an excellent point. And Austin, you know, this might be something that's easier for recent college grads, but there are millions of people out there right now who are lurk, work, uh, looking for work who never thought they'd be in this position in their lives working uh, looking for work what do you tell folks who might not feel as comfortable with technology about uh, having to adapt to the changing uh, job hunting environment we're living in well you know i think that what i try to do is just to encourage them you know we all carry multimedia studios around in our pockets these days with mm -hmm. our smartphones so the first thing I like to encourage people is, like, think about the places you already are, like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, and think about how you can start showing your work using the simple tools that you already have. Take a photo of your workspace. Take a video of you performing something. Write a little post, you know. 
just jump in there and start uh, and start showing your work. And I think it, the learning curve is pretty, pretty, pretty not too bad. You know, I think you can jump in there and start swimming. Is is technophobia, if you will, demographically related? As John lays out here, uh, for example, my kids just run rings around me with their knowledge of the internet, e even some basic things. And and Austin, does your book? help fill the gap to cure some of that technophobia? Well, I think what my book tries to do is to give people the big picture principles. It's actually not a very technical book, because I think once you master the attitude of showing your work, of getting yourself out there, the technology hurdles aren't that high. So I, I try to encourage people to just take a step back and realize it's not about technology, it's about an attitude and it's about having the right way of operating instead of just the tools, because the tools are actually pretty easy. All right, well the new book up here on the screen right now, Show Your Work, a worthwhile read uh, for the millions of folks out there today who are still looking for work. And, and I just have to ask Austin one other question. Your inspiration from the, for this, is it a real life experience? Did you find fun and profit by displaying your work, or is this very endeavor practicing what you preached or at least the road to get getting this book out oh you know everything that ever that was good that happened to me was because of my website from being online you know when i got out of college i had i was a creative writing major i had no career prospects <laughs> but by jumping online and sharing what i love i met the people i needed to meet and i got where i needed to go and i think everyone can do that too well, you, you mentioned a website. Uh, where do we go to find out more information about you and what you're producing daily? I can be found the easiest at austincleon.com. Ah, so you do have that eponymously named website, the space that you own on the Internet, uniquely yours. I sure do. <laughs> All right, uh, setting an example for all of us, maybe needing to carve out some of our own space out there, because who knows gonna be who's, who's going to be controlling it coming uh, years down the road. Well, in uh, in the days of electioneering, you say it's old-fashioned electioneering. One area where we've seen that change is political, where so many people running for pu public office get that .com or .net website with their name attached to it. And there, there's a story behind that that can get to be a, a little trying at times for would-be candidates. Austin Cleon there with the book, Show Us Your Work or Your Work. And Austin, we do appreciate your time. All right, much more ahead Thanks. here on America's Forum. We want to hear from you. You can tweet us at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. Email us, connect at NewsmaxTV.com, or find us on Facebook, facebook.com backslash America's Forum. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll have more on the missing jetliner out of Malaysia, and should America and its allies consider more sanctions against Russia? That and more when we return.